What is up, guys? It is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, back again today with another fantasy football video. Today's the This is the second video of today. The first video was a mock draft from earlier. It was a three wide receiver PPR mock draft. So, if you missed out on that, go back after the end of this video. But this video is a buy or sell 11th round ADP video. Pretty much that means will I buy or sell a player at their 11th round average draft position Episode 1 through 10, the first through 10th round, is also on my channel down below. And pretty much what that also means is buy or sell pretty much means will I draft or will I not draft them at their current ADP. And before I start the video, I'd like to ask you guys to please go down below and click that subscribe button because when you click that subscribe button, you're going to be getting all the videos that are going to help you dominate your draft, dominate during the regular season, dominate during the postseason, and win that championship. So make sure to do that. So let's get into the video. So the first pick in the 11th round is Tom Brady, quarterback, New England Patriots. And Tom Brady may be the GOAT in real life, but he is not the GOAT for your fantasy team. You do not want Tom Brady. The Patriots are now a more run-heavy team than they were in the past. Sony Michelle, James White, Damian Harris, Rex Burkhead, a bunch of running backs they have that are good. Bill Belichick likes running the ball now more than he did in the past. It's not all the Tom Brady show. Tom Brady, his age is getting up there now. I don't think he's going to be terrible this year. He probably won't be terrible. He'll probably win another fucking Super Bowl, knowing my luck as a Dolphins fan. But I, what I do know is that you don't want Tom Brady in fantasy. He's not going to be throwing the rock as much. He has none of the upside that a lot of the guys that I'm targeting later have. Either they get, they have a great arm and are throwing the ball a lot in the games, or they're quarterbacks that are able to run the ball and do what they can't do with their arm on their legs. And for that reason, I don't want Tom Brady on my fantasy team in 2019, even in the 11th round. But in the 11th round, he's not going to go in the 11th round in reality. In your at-home league, he may end up going in like the fucking 6th round if you're playing with a bunch of idiots. So in the 1102, the second pick of the 11th round, we got Emmanuel Sanders, wide receiver, Denver Broncos. And in my opinion, he's a sell, but he's not a hard sell, in my opinion. In like the 12th or 13th round, if he's there, I'm taking him. But the reason why I'm not taking him here in the 11th round is because I like uh, his teammate who goes later, Deshaun Hamilton, the other wide receiver on the team. And I'd rather just take the latest Denver wide receiver. And I think that Emmanuel Sanders is getting up there in age, obviously. He had an injury last year, which kind of would worry me. Now, you, if you've seen the training camp video videos, you could see that he looks explosive. He looks fast, just like he was in the past. But obviously, one training camp video doesn't... Uh, conclude what's going to happen on the field so for that reason i'm out on emmanuel sanders i don't necessarily hate him like i said but i just don't want to draft him here when there's other wide receivers around this area that i like more so at the 1103 we have big ben rothlisberger and he's a buy he is like what i was talking about tom brady how someone slings the ball out a lot Big Ben loves slinging the rock. Now, he did lose his number one wide receiver in A.B., but what could A.B. do that Julio, that uh, Juju really can't do all that well? Now, they don't have that connection. They don't have the uh, the sign language that they were doing where the fucking he'd put up the peace sign and or, or A.B. would put up the peace sign and then Big Ben would change the route in his head of what A.B. is going to do. Now, that's not going to be happening. Maybe Juju can develop that soon in the future, but I think there's a lot of solid passing options there. Guys like Juju... James Washington, I don't like that much, but Don, Dante Moncrief's a solid option there. They've got Vance McDonald, the big tight end, to throw the ball to, and he has James Conner, the safety net, to dump the ball off to. And I think that Big Ben is obviously not going to be uh, one of the uh, the great quarterbacks of fantasy. He's not going to be some guy that finishes top five, but I think he is. he's going to have a bunch of weeks where he finishes top 12, and I think that if you really wait a long time on quarterback, he's not a terrible option. I would prefer guys like... Uh, that run the ball more like Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen over him. But in my opinion, if he was my quarterback too, I would be fine with it. And if he was the only quarterback around, I'm definitely fine taking Big Ben. Big Ben has taken me to many championships in fantasy and won them. I love Mr. Big Ben in fantasy. So at the 11:04, we have Jarek McKinnon, running back, San Francisco 49ers. And he's a buy because I'm just going to buy any of these San Francisco running backs really late. If it's him or Burita, I want either of them because I think one of these guys is going to emerge as the solid running back one on the team. It's There's Tevin Coleman. There's McKinnon. There's fucking Burita. There's a, it's a fucking carousel of fucking running backs, and you want to make sure you get the right one. Now, whether it's McKinnon or Burita, I personally think Burita is going to really end up being the one, but I think McKinnon is going to get his opportunity to do it too. And I think that uh, just getting a piece of this running back core super late could be worth the pick at the 11.04, and that's why I like him. And Jarek McKinnon was going a lot earlier last year uh, before he got hurt, so maybe maybe this discount after the injury could prove to be worth it. So at the 11.04, I like Jarek McKinnon a decent amount. At the 11.05, we have Alexander Matasson running back for the 
Vikings. Alexander Madison. I, I don't know why that took me so long to figure out because I almost said that he was on the Jaguars, but he is not. Alexander Madison is the running back for the Vikings, the backup for Mr. Dalvin Cook. Now, I like Alexander Madison because of the fact that I know, I know for a fact Dalvin Cook is going to get hurt this year, and I know for a fact, sorry if you just heard me click my pen aggressively, I know for a fact that uh, Dalvin Cook's going to get hurt, and I think that Alexander Madison is going to get that role and play well, play great, and I also think that Alexander Madison is going to be still be getting touches because Dalvin Cook, they need a, a change of pace, and Dalvin Cook can't be out there all that long because he's an in injury-prone running back, and I think that Alexander Madison is still going to put up solid production even on that team being the running back too, potentially being a solid flex option later in the season once uh, they figure it out there on the team, or maybe even right out of the gate, Alexander Madison is an option that seems great at your flex option in fantasy football and a solid 11th round pick. So after we went Alexander Madison, Delaney Walker came out, comes off the board at the 1106 tight end, the old man Delaney Walker for the Tennessee Titans, and he's a sell now. If you fucking completely tank at tight end, you wait all the way till the end, pick Delaney Walker, go ahead, and pair him with someone else. But I don't want anything to do with Delaney Walker. He's injury prone. He got injured last year. He's really old. And the Tennessee Titans just don't have wide receiver options or tight end options that I want. I don't want any piece of the Tennessee Titans. Except for Deion Lewis. Derrick Henry, I don't want. Delaney Walker, I don't want. Corey Davis, I don't want. Adam Humphreys, I don't want. I don't want A.J. Brown. I don't want any of that shit. Get the Tennessee Titans the fuck out of here. You don't want any of those guys. And neither do I. So at the 11.07, we have a defense, the Baltimore Ravens. Now, you might be saying, oh, Nick, I love the Baltimore Ravens in fantasy. They're going to be a great fucking defense. You know what I say to you? Who gives a fuck? You don't draft the defense this early. You wait till the last round of your draft to pick a defense. So you don't pick the Baltimore defense here. And that's why they are a sell. At the 11.08, we have Devin Funchess, formerly of the Panthers, now on a different team that is escaping me. And the fact that I don't even know what team he's on is uh, kind of concerning because I talk about Devin Funches a lot because I do not like Devin Funches at all because of his injury proneness. He already got hurt just a few days into training camp. He's already hurt, and he is on the Colts. And uh, I don't know why that escaped me. He's on the Colts, and there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen on the Colts at the wide receiver position. They've got a bunch of They've got rookies. They've got T.Y. Hilton, and they've got Devin Funches. And by God, if you would, you would catch me dead if I picked Devin Funches. I'd have to be dead before my corpse selects Devin Funches, because that man doesn't have hands. He's injury prone. You saw it last year on the Panthers. No hands. He gets hurt. He got hurt in practice. He's not going to be useful in fantasy, and you want to avoid him. I, I don't even know why anyone's even drafting this guy, because he, he's fucking terrible. All right? I'm sorry to say that, Devin Funches, because I watched you in All or Nothing, and you seemed like a nice guy, but you're fucking terrible at football, and I don't want you on my fucking fantasy team. So at the 11.09, we have James Washington, wide receiver, Steelers. I almost said Seattle. Steelers, Pittsburgh Steelers. Go with my bit friend, Big Ben. And a lot of people like James Washington, but for me, he's a sell now. He had an okay season last year. Okay, not fantasy useful, just played okay. And... In reality, if he was the wide receiver too, I'd probably be buying him. But reports are coming out. It's my main man, Dante Moncrief, going two picks later is going to be the wide receiver too. So why in the fuck would I pick the wide receiver three at the 11.09 when I get the wide receiver two, two picks later? I like Moncrief because I, I know he's not going to catch as many passes as Juju caught last year. But those AB targets got to go somewhere. Those Jesse James targets got to go somewhere. And I think it's going to go to Moncrief and to Vance McDonald primarily, those targets. And maybe somebody even fucking James Conner. James Conner may catch a, a bajillion balls if he somehow makes it through the whole season. So, at the 11-10, we have Ito Smith, the judge. According, that is his uh, nickname from the Fantasy Couch. I watched that guy's videos. His videos are great. Ito Smith. Now, Ito Smith is the Falcons running bike. And he's the second running back on the team. He's second on the depth chart. They have another running back whose name is very confusing to say at the third or uh, as the third string. And I believe that Devontae Freeman is going to go down this season. He always gets hurt. He's injury prone. He'll get hurt tying his shoes just like some other guys like AJ Green. 
like Devin Funches, and we don't want anything. We do want everything to do with Ito Smith, and really nothing to do with Devontae Freeman, because I think Ito Smith is going to get a lot of touches, just like Devin, not Devin, Tevin Coleman was getting last year, and I think that that win in, inevitably, even if Devontae Freeman plays like 13, 14 games, Ito Smith's still going to get some goal line work, because like uh, Andrew Kirkhoff said in his video from yesterday, he said that um, Devontae Freeman is so injury prone, he's had these concussion problems, littered with concussion problems over the past couple of years, since 2015, that that Ito Smith is going to be in on certain goal line situations where they're running straight up the middle because they can't have Devontae Freeman get more concussions. And he's, he could get concussed at the goal line when he's getting when helmets are smashed against each other at the goal line for someone to get in. So Edo Smith could be vulturing touchdowns, and I think he's a solid pick back here. And I think if you have Devontae Freeman, you need to make sure, you need to make damn well sure that you get Edo Smith on your team. At the 11-11, we already talked about him. It's Mr. Dante Moncrief, wide receiver, Pittsburgh Steelers. He's a buy, obviously. I talked about him. He's better than James Washington. He's going to be the number two target on the team. Maybe not, actually. Maybe the number three target, because he'll jump it off to James Conner, throw it to Vance McDonald. But he's still going to be scoring touchdowns. The Pittsburgh Steelers offense is still pretty good. People are all all in fucking shambles because the Browns are so good or something that they believe that the Pittsburgh Steelers just suck. Now, that's just stupid. I think that the the Browns are going to win the division, but at the exact same time, I know the Steelers are not just going to go down without a fight. A, just because AB's gone doesn't mean the Steelers can't do anything, and AB's targets are obviously going to go towards Dante Moncrief, some to Dante Moncrief. They're going to spread the ball out, and I think that Dante Moncrief proved in the years past that he's somewhat of a good receiver and he's a lot better than James Washington so he will be getting he'll be out there a lot to catch passes from Big Ben. So at the 11-12 we have Lamar Jackson quarterback slash running back of the Baltimore Ravens. Now, haha, that was a funny joke. You said slash running back. The reason why I say slash running back is because this motherfucker may be able to run the ball for a thousand yards. And I want to buy that because if he somehow gets a thousand rushing yards, that would be the craziest shit ever. E- even though he kind of sucks at throwing the ball. And if he can somehow get better at throwing the ball, this is going to be the best pick you've ever made in fantasy football at the 11th round or the 12th round, wherever you're getting him. Lamar Jackson is going to be fucking great this year. He's going to be running the ball a lot. Now, if he somehow gets 1,000 yards and doesn't get hurt, that's crazy. I think he may end up getting hurt due to the amount of... Due to the fact that he just, when he doesn't see anyone open, he like looks once at one of his reads and he goes, oh shit, there's no one there, just runs the ball. But at the same time, I think Lamar Jackson has found his safety net in Mark Andrews. I've seen all these training camp footage of Mark Andrews absolutely eating. Lamar Jackson throwing him the ball and the ball actually looking pretty good to to Mark Andrews. So I really like Lamar Jackson. I really like Lamar Andrews. Or not Lamar Andrews. I like Lamar Jackson and I like Mark Andrews. And I believe that Lamar Jackson will end up being probably one of the biggest sleepers you ever draft in fantasy football. And he will succeed very well this season, I think. Now, in certain matchups, obviously, you may not be able to play Lamar Jackson. But I do believe that he's going to be a solid option back here. And if you go with the double quarterback strategy, if you go with a guy like Lamar Jackson and you go Josh Allen later, you're going to end up with quite the good team. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If you enjoyed please, 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 please click that like button down below. It really would help me. And if you also leave a comment, that also helps me a lot. But what would help me the most is if you click that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed so that you can get all your videos so that you can win your fucking championship and so you can have a great goddamn day after you, after you subscribe. Even if you don't fucking click the subscribe button, I hope you have a great goddamn day. Click one of these other videos that's on the screen right now if you want to have some more fun and listen to me ramble on for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, however long this video is. This is probably like 15 minutes. But it's whatever. Have a great goddamn day, guys. And I'll see you guys in a few hours with the third upload. I'm just uploading all types of videos. So hopefully you enjoy. And I, I love all of you guys. Have a great day. Goodbye.